Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Daniel Lovick. Uh, I head up um, SAP and IT solutions for Zulik Pharma. Um, today, I'd like to run you through uh, basically some of the work we've been doing <coughs> around blockchain, uh, especially in the material traceability in the, the pharma supply chain uh, here in, in Asia. Um, so really, uh, there's, there's two parts to the presentation today. Uh, myself, I will uh, I'll run to the um, uh, the solution that we have, um, and basically some of the use cases which we've um, which we have we have in place in in the region. And then I'll hand over to my colleague Kai Shen, who will take you through more technical on the on the architecture and and basically the vision roadmap of, of where we hope to take the solution. So really, uh, before I, I, I jump in, uh, let me just give a little overview of, of who Zulik Pharma are. Um, we're a privately owned, uh, Swiss uh, family owned company um, based out of Asia, um, originally uh, headquartered out of the Philippines. Uh, we've been in uh, around uh, and established for, for close to 100 years. Um, and we have roughly 13,000 employees across 13 countries in Asia. And um, last year we, we hit roughly $14 billion in, in, in sales revenue. And we we are by nature we are we are a pharma distributor. Um, so what we do is we distribute um, pharmaceutical products for for the key uh, pharma manufacturers, um, and the distribution is is a key part of of our business. Um, but we do have a number of other services that we offer around um, uh, around our distribution, um, and and we do things like uh, clinical reach. We have commercial solutions where, where we we take um, products under license, and um, we have um, uh, Care Connect where we look at um, uh, things around payer services and uh, and um, HR and insurance and then underpinning that we have uh, our analytics business which really is, is looking at um, all of the, the data points um, that we capture along the, the supply chain and, and how we can use those to to kind of uh, help our, our clients um, make, make better and faster decisions um, as I say we we uh, we are in 13 countries in, in Asia. Um, we are in a, a pretty unique position in, in Asia in that we have quite large uh, coverage in a lot of the, the markets that we uh, that, that, that we actually deal in. Um, as you can see, Philippines is, is one of our biggest uh, biggest markets there. Um, and also we have, um, uh, as I said, we, we, we are a distributor for the top uh, pharma uh, manufacturers in, in the world. And you can see that, that the majority of the, the top 20 or 30 that we list there, um, are, are, are we distribute for them. And, and uh, across multiple markets uh, that, that we actually uh, yeah that we actually do business in. So really, um, what I wanted to talk to you about today is really around uh, what we've been trying to do in the supply chain uh, traceability space. Um, and, and really, it, it's Asia is a very different. Um, a very different market or place that than, than some of the, the US or, or, um, or Europe for, for what we're seeing here. You know, there's a huge issue with um, with counterfeits in uh, in this region. Uh, it's it's estimated World Health Organization says between one in ten, it could be up to three in ten of uh, of products that are coming into the market here are either counterfeit or or substandard. Uh, and obviously that that has a huge in, impact on uh, on people's lives, but also on, on lost revenue. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, anywhere up to $3 billion currently being lost in, in revenue in, for counterfeit medicines in, in Southeast Asia alone. There's also quite a, 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 a large problem, you may say, uh, or prevalence uh, around um, cross-border trading or, or gray markets. So basically products that are that are sold in one market end up uh, turning up in, in in another market, um, and so really that that oh, that brings with it a, a whole risk of a whole raft of issues um, around how did they get there, how were they transported, are these cold chain products were they were they transported in the right conditions? Uh, not to not to mention that, that there's a, there's a monetary value attached to that as well. Um, obviously there's a, there's there's a margin erosion, um, there's inefficiencies in the supply chain. Um, there's obviously each handover point uh, the data can be lost um, basically um, and so really how do we how do we streamline that whole um, supply chain how do we how do we give a window into the, the visibility um, and how do we share data efficiently across the uh, across the supply chain and um, when we originally started this 
this um, this idea about putting a blockchain solution in, in place, it was really to help facilitate product recalls. And product recalls in the pharma industry and in the space take a, a long time. Uh, they can take anything between two to three months to, to figure out where all the products are and get everything in place and, and then try to, to try to pull them all back. How can we put a solution in place where at a click of a button you can uh, you can quarantine products and, and know exactly where, where everything where everything is? And then obviously, the, there's, there's, uh, this is not something that can be ignored now. Um, it is, um, it, it's high on on everybody's agenda. It is, we see um, from interactions with um, authorities such as Interpol and uh, UN organized drug and crime that are really being able to to get or, or target um, counterfeits in in this this area is, is key and a, a top agenda. So how can we how can we help in that fight? So really, it's a it's a pretty uh, a simple or straightforward solution as as what we were looking at. Really, uh, if we look at the, our our supply chain, we have raw material suppliers, we have manufacturers, we have ourselves distributors, uh, and then we have the the, the channels of, of where they go, be that a hospital, a uh, clinic, um, and then at the end uh, the, the the patient. But really, how can we how, how can we bring all of these players together, all these parties uh, in in what is tends to be a fragmented ecosystem together uh, and help and get people everybody to to participate um, in in a in a network in effect um, and so one this the, the first challenge that we saw was um being able to share uh, information between parties you know there's no um there's no standardized format uh, there's no um, mechanism for, for data transfer there's also a lack of uh, let's say trust uh, people don't want to uh, send data data ownership so how can we how can we make a, offer a solution where where we take those those kind of pain points away we then saw the uh, the second challenge was really to be able to uh, to track a product's activity from end to end along along the supply chain so really uh, get information passed over consistently uh, being able to record that information um, in, in a timely manner um, and being able to uh, to to give whoever needs access to that that data a, a window into it without uh, with it being able to overcome the challenges of, of sharing information and then the third challenge was, uh, how do you give this access to, to a patient? Uh, how, how can we empower a patient to be able to, to through a mobile phone, uh, look into, into the supply chain and, uh, and make a, a decision or a choice before they, are, uh, they take a drug or, or before they are vaccinated, that, that this is a, maybe uh, genuine is a, is, a, is a hard word to, to be able to, to kind of prove, but to be at least able to say that it, it came through a verified supply chain and, and we have confidence that, that this product has, has been passed through and, and the handoff points are, have been adequately controlled along, along the supply chain. So really, in a nutshell, the, the solution uh, is is a uh, is a two or three part solution, uh, depending on how we want to look at it. Um, it and it's uh, the, the, if you break it down in its basic parts, it really is a, a mobile uh, app that allows a patient to scan a data matrix QR code um, on medication um, and be able to trace right the way back to to the the origin of of that particular product, uh, where it was manufactured, where it came from, where it's been. Uh, how long it was in certain locations, uh, where was it stored in the in the right temperature controls, um, and and that that it's been through a supply chain and been handled in the correct way, and so uh, as I mentioned, it really it just all it does is tran uh, transform a, a mobile phone, a patient's mobile phone, into a verification tool. Um, very very straightforward scan. You you get a you get a result. Uh, we run it uh, on Azure, um, so it's it's all cloud based, um, and so. Um, what we're doing is uh, the solution itself. Uh, it sits on on Hyperledger Fabric, um, and it really is a a very easy way, uh, a non-intrusive way to allow patients to to see um, the provenance of of a drug um, by by scanning a code on on the box. And so what. what we've started to look at uh, this is this is it's all very nice um, so we we, uh, we obviously have an ecology assurance for, uh, for, for for patients but then is there any other key stakeholders that that we can also help uh, by by having the solution in place um, and so really how do we look at um, 
uh, our our key pharma manufacturers or, or our key clients there to help them with with certain areas which are maybe pain points in in their business um and so really obviously straight up is is really being able to to work with them on pharmacovigilance to track uh, products from from plant to to down to the patient but then is the is there other things that we can do around uh, around wastage uh, and cost uh, maybe we can do inventory visibility we can do vmi we can start to do auto replenishments um, and really a big one that, that we're starting to see is obviously around the, the brand trust and so basically being able to strengthen uh, that brand trust um, and and really um, allow them to to kind of give a stamp of approval to say okay the, the products that, that we, we have they're going through easy tracker we work in there we know that they, you, you can be assured that these are these are uh, genuine products they've been through a genuine supply chain and they've been handled in in the correct way so really kind of using that as as a, as a rubber stamp to say yes yeah, so if you scan with, with this with the, with the easy tracker product you, you're good to go obviously uh, patience is a is a key one um really it, it is about empowering the patient um to 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 make a choice that uh, that the, the product that they're about to take uh, is 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 good and, and and they can have a confidence that that they can go ahead and take that um again yeah checking that it's a, a, a genuine uh, medica medication but also the quality and then really if if there is an issue with that, that product after they say they've scanned it how can they report any any issue so if there's any advanced adverse events or for instance product recalls how can we how can we very quickly um notify a patient because we know that they scanned it to say look you have to return that product uh, because because there's something wrong with it and then the third one was really uh, how can we better work with with, with healthcare um, organizations so really how can we how can we start to um, to use this this blockchain network that we we build up to say okay is there is there other things we can do around inventory management again around the vmi or, or auto replenishment how can we maybe look at if we take it one step further about um, looking at uh, at payments so really if you can if you can start to facilitate uh, a a, um, a network where we can guarantee that the the product is is genuine as it's been through a supply chain it's uh, the quality was okay it's been delivered can you then start to to work on some sort of uh, auto financing so that that um, we can tick all the boxes and then you can start to uh, release a payment or you can work on on, on some sort of uh, integrated uh, financing solution that that uh, that can help with the the efficiencies in healthcare and so really in a in a nutshell i think uh, as i explained it is there's, there's uh, key players that we have in the in the ecosystem um each of those players has their own um, blockchain node um, and, uh, and and it feeds into the blockchain network and basically what we're trying to do or what we are doing is, is that a, a patient um, has, a, has a mobile app uh, they scan the, the code as you can see and they get one of three answers um, it's a genuine product uh, you're good to go it's unregistered it's, it's not a product that we find anywhere on, on the blockchain even though it looks like a genuine code um, and um, and yeah in all intention purposes the pack it, packaging is genuine and, and uh, it looks like a real product or there's uh, a third one that we see is is a parallel uh, product so really this this was a genuine product it went through the supply chain but it's in a place where it, it shouldn't be and that could be a different country it could also be a, a different uh, facility for instance we can go down to the level to say okay this was um this was sold to a government hospital but actually you're scanning it in a in a private clinic um, and we're not sure how we got there so really really getting a granular uh, level of of detail uh, and being able to to share that with the, with the patient um, one area that i touch on is really around this digital identity um you know this this is um in asia we don't have a so far we don't have a serialization mandate uh, that, that that is across across asia um we it's not like what we see happening in the us and what we see kind of happening in europe uh, here if we take only only korea has has serialization but this makes the solution a, a little bit more difficult in, to be able to um, to to give the level of granularity that that we want to to, to make it a, a much more usable system. And so, as part of um, our, our warehousing process, what we actually do is is assign a digital identity to each of the products that are that are actually loaded into to the, the blockchain and into um, and available on Easy Tracker. And what that does is it allows us to then tag individual boxes. Uh, to uh, individual 
people who have been sold to and then back to and then obviously then tie that back to the, to the patient so uh, but it gives us a much uh, lower level of granularity that that we would usually get if we were working with with say um uh, products on a, on a batch level um and so very very simple uh, we have kind of three three main areas which we we target in the um in, in the easy tracker solution one is obviously traceability and all about uh, being able to use blockchain to help um Secure the supply chain and um, and flag if there's if there's any issues, any any falsified or counterfeits or any cross borders. Strengthening uh, is really around um, around helping uh, pharma clients um, to to basically strengthen their their, their products. Uh, if there is any 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 issues or anything that that's that's flagged uh, through the app, then how do we then take the next step and and, and how do we pass this off to the, the the necessary authorities so that they can do something about it, and then. There's an education piece as well because within the app, um, if you scan a product, we can obviously then then put uh, some some key points around um, why you should take the product, uh, education around what potentially might be side effects, uh, and also if you if you scan a counterfeit product, what well, what could be the the impact if you were to uh, if you were to, to to take that product. And so finally, before, before I hand over to um, to Haishing to go through uh, some of the more technical details, really I want to just touch on a, on a few of the um, a few of the, uh, the the kind of the use cases or success stories that that we we have uh, up and running. Um, and so one one is is um, we've we've worked uh, very closely with with our partner Accenture to really pioneer and build the, the Asia's first blockchain network for for pharmaceutical and healthcare clients. Um, and really, this is this is how we've started to um, how we did this was was really work together. We we obviously went through a design thinking uh, approach, partnering with with Accenture. Um, we've developed a hyperledger blockchain integration framework, and we've worked um, on on, a, on an API layer and really in, enhancing the data and the communications between. Uh, between between the components, and then we're we're now uh, in the process of, of really starting to to ramp this up and, and onboard uh, on board pharmaceutical clients, um, and really it, it is obviously the first um, first blockchain network of its of its kind in in Asia. Um, second one is is really th this is uh, something that 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 we we are kind of live with now, and it's really this this all builds in um, to some of the work that we've done already with with MSD uh, on on their products. But really, it it was it's a a nice extension, if you like, to build out. Um, to, to the next level. So we've already worked closely with MSD and Zulu Pharma for, for, for products in, in Hong Kong. How can we then build in the next step in the ecosystem, which would be to bring in a, a clinic management uh, provider and, and bring in a chain of clinics uh, to then then capture that data. And so really, how do we, we work in, in a partnership to, to bring that uh, together um, and really, Really, yeah. So, really, how how do we how do we kind of start to build out the, the blockchain network from from uh, to bring all players into into the ecosystem? And so, this was a key um, objective or strategic objective of, of where we wanted to take the the blockchain network. Um, and and so, this is, a, in our opinion, a very very big step uh, in in building out the the ecosystem. And then, really, the 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 the, the um, use case that really kicked it off was was um, the, when we started this in 2019, was um, we, we had a, 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 an issue, or there was an issue in, in Hong Kong where we, there was um, counterfeit HPV vaccines being administered, um, and so we, we worked closely with MSD to to kind of build a solution which would allow um, allow them to overcome this. And, and really, what it does is to to uh, bring MS, uh, MSD uh, Gardasil 9 vaccines into the um, blockchain, and then allow the app to be able to scan them uh, and for them to be able to, uh, for the patient to be able to, uh, to to get the result before they, they were vaccinated and so really this this is uh, it, it, I often get asked is this a, a kind of a pilot or is it a POC but that, this is a, a real life um, uh, um, deployment it, it's live there's there's people who, who downloaded the um, downloaded the the app uh, as you can see there close to 20,000 uh, have the app running uh, and we've had so far more than 40,000 scans of, of the of the product um, and it's going very very successfully and we've had to keep evolving the, the product uh, along along the way you know we've, we've having to move towards uh, better technology around uh, being able to um, um, 
secure the, the data matrix codes, make them anti-tamper proof, uh, make sure they, that, that they can't be copied or, or kind of uh, reused. Uh, but uh, very successful um, so far, and that's allowed us to build on um, with, with the additional use cases and, and kind of start to build out this, this ecosystem. So with that, I will hand over to my colleague Haisheng, and he will go through the, the, the technical uh, architecture for Easy Tracker. Haisheng, okay, are you there? Okay, okay, thank you, Daniel. Maybe can I share my screen? Yeah. Okay, Daniel, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, so in here, our cover two things. One is our technical architecture. Another one is our uh, roadmap in the future. So as Dan said, uh, currently we are in our production. So how it works in very high level, uh, high level uh, architect. Uh, so we, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, down the way from supplier until the end user, uh, the pay, uh, the clinic and the end user, we are onboarding all of almost all of them in our uh, hyperledger fabric blo uh, blockchain. <clears throat> you can see uh, currently we we are onboarding some of the manufacturers, including MSD, Garden, uh, Garden Cell, uh, Garden Mart, right? So in here in the manufacturer, they will share the uh, the we will feed in the material batching information, including the uh the batch info, <clears throat> the expiration data, all of the other met data to the uh, blockchain. But of course, before that, there are some off-chain data, meaning uh not all of the information will be fed into the of uh, the uh, blockchain ledger data. Instead, there might be some uh, their own private data. So uh we only feed in the evidence for the traceability uh, purpose because of that the data for the traceability will be shared along the network blockchain network to all of the participants in the uh, in the network so this including the uh, distributor like a distributor like Azuli Pharma or the other distributor and the uh, HCO uh, hospital clinic as well as the uh, the end user <coughs> yeah so uh, when the Product reach the uh the uh warehouse in Zuli Pharma. We will also feed in more information in the blockchain. Uh, some uh, one thing is the uh the the good uh traceability information. The update like uh, we will be tracing uh this data to uh, we will be shipping this data uh, this uh medicine to the uh, to the hospital or clinic. Another thing is the uh security uh information like the coaching information as well as the, the other uh the other things we will fit in this information into the blockchain and then down the way to the clinic uh, the clinic will also do some uh stock uh, re uh repos repository management as well as the patient information the patient vaccination management so <clears throat> so you can see uh, down the way ex except for the supplier side so down the way we are sharing all of the information in the blockchain network so all of the uh note all of the organization will see some portion of the of the information not all because you know, of the some uh, privacy some confidential and the uh, legal appliance reason so how do we do this so this is a very detailed architecture i will spend like a three hours to go through every detail so i won't do that because um, in technical uh, point of view this is quite a quite a common quite a normal design but still there are some highlights i want to i want to mention here <clears throat> so one is we have the connection between the existing system to our blockchain network so meaning uh, we will fed in the data from your uh, existing si system uh, in our case it is a sub hana database for the other case uh, we they can uh, we can get data from either their open service or their uh, database or even their uh, just uh, some excel file to upload to the uh, to the file server right so we have our uh, defined a uh, well defined etl system to to load the data to our often uh, often database as well as the uh, blockchain ledger data in the we will share we are sharing our api so that for the easy track app for the end user for the zoe the warehouse operator and for the other part, uh, partners or the other 
uh, software company to consume uh, all the other manufacturer or the other uh, participant to consume our API, you know, as a as a service, right? <laughs> so uh, we will, you know, uh, send the data to the blockchain. Uh, the in the blockchain, how do we build this blockchain? Even in very short time, there are two key points. One is the AKS cluster, the AKS. So we are build up this uh, everything in Azure Microsoft Azure Cloud with a uh, Kubernetes service. <clears throat> this is one thing. Another thing is that we use the uh, the the buff the blockchain automation framework released by uh, Accenture to do the automated uh, deployment. So this buff is super strong. They can support the Corda Atrium uh, Hyperledger Fabric to deploy in any of the cloud so, uh, cloud uh, provider, Azure, AWS, and the GCP, uh, uh, as well as the on-premise service. Uh, yeah. So that means we can we are able to support the uh, all the other participants to host their own node their, in their own infra in very easy way. But uh, so one thing to, I want to mention is that so for now we can provide the main the service from Zulik side. Uh, you know we can you know uh, we can uh, uh, host everything for the clinic because they don't have the technical capacity or they don't have time to build up that or they don't want to build up from their side. So we will help them to build up the everything yeah, uh, for them for the clinic or for the other. Uh, 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 participants. So after we build up that, we will help to op uh, operate on this uh, node as well. The same time, we can also allow the other uh, participant to build up their own infra. So I just take this AWS as an example. <clears throat> you can do that in whatever other cloud. So this uh, infra is just a uh, uh, some replicate of the uh, everything from the Azure cloud. Only they don't need to set up their own network. Instead, they only just need to set up the node from their side. The node, uh, the the API service of chain database, even uh, even the message queue, everything. So uh, when they set up the infra from their side, they, we will share the information from the blockchain uh, from the blockchain layer. <clears throat> So what are the information shared uh, across the, the blockchain? Uh, we, for uh, currently, we have uh, basically the three big uh, categories. One is the medicine information, the vaccination, the medicine, uh, the, uh, the traceability information. The other thing is the quality uh, information, such as the uh, expiry data, uh, the coaching temperature information uh, in real time, <clears throat> and also also have the clinic inform clinic connection to help the clinic to to uh, keep the patient information and the stock information. So these are the uh, three major information uh, to save in the ledger. But still, uh, you know, uh, as uh, Daniel said, we are in production. But still, we are in very uh, young age. We only uh, you know uh, deploy that in production in like a half a years ago. So <laughs> what is our vision? So I will uh, share that in two, two sides. One is <clears throat> who, uh, in what kind of solution we can provide for the end user, uh, for the participant. Another one is how, uh, what, what kind of participant can, be, uh, can get help, uh, can get benefit from this uh, blockchain network. Uh, so one thing is uh, the material traceability information. So this is our foundation for the easy tracker blockchain. So we will help the uh, manufacturer, the clean, uh, the hospital, and the the, uh, the distributor to maintain the tra uh, to trace and track the material, and also help uh, the patient to to see whether this is the uh, genuine or counterfeit to do the authentic uh, authenticity uh, check. And the quality uh, assurance information, such as the uh, empire data and the coaching information, this is very, very important, especially we will be tracing the uh, COVID-19 vaccine. So this, uh, I mean, all of the uh, vaccine will be kept in very uh, good uh, storage con uh, condition. So we should keep a very uh, secure condition for this uh, medicine. Uh, another thing is for the patient uh, safety. I mean, among, <coughs> among all of these things, patient 
Yeah, among all of these things, patient security is the number one. Uh, yeah, literally the number number one important things for us to do in the blockchain world. <clears throat> so we want to make sure the patient can use the, the medicine in very secure way. So anytime if there are anything wrong with the medicine, we will be uh you know uh messaging the patient to do the you know uh, the callback and to uh, to alert the patient for any potential risk. So this is the, the number one important thing for the blockchain uh, to do. The last but not the least, uh, in the future, we will help the participant to do the finance uh, things. We will uh, reduce the, <clears throat> the paperwork. We will increase the return of the, the cash. Then we will you know, save the money for the, uh, for the participant. Then in the, in the future, we will uh, you know, help the, the patient uh, to, to, to do more things. So uh, these are the uh, solutions we can provide for the participant. And so who will be, be get benefit from our blockchain? So almost all of the uh, participants, all, all, all of the guys from the uh, supply, chain, uh, supply chain ecosystem can get benefit from us. So uh, including the pharma manufacturers, the distributors, uh, as well as some even the Zuli Pharma's uh, competitors, the di distributors, uh, warehouses, and the other pharmacies, retailer, and the clinic and uh, hospitals. So all of them will be able to be onboarded in the blockchain network, <coughs> easy check blockchain network. <coughs> and also we will provide more <coughs> solution for each, every single participant so that we can attract more uh, participant to be on board in our blockchain network and then you know the uh, participant should also uh, get benefit from our uh, very uh, very big network so that you know we can uh, expand the network and also <clears throat> we will be working very closely with the other blockchain uh, uh, pharmaceutical blockchain network such as the uh, uh, media uh, ledger from the US and the pharma ledger from uh, Europe so after so this interledger cross ledger cross blockchain solution it it is it, just a still uh in the uh and the construction but in the future we will be working very closely with this uh this other uh network you know to enhance our solution to <coughs> to give a very uh big uh, even bigger ecosystem yeah so this of easy trigger so, so as, as i said still uh easy trigger blockchain is in our infancy uh period still it's only half years old right <clears throat> we are very still uh, still we are very young we are small but in the future we will be helping the the whole world to you know uh to reduce the diseases diseases to to uh increase the uh the health condition so our be our dream is very big so I think that's all for my side. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, if you are, yeah, you're more than welcome to ask questions in here and also to learn uh, more things from our website. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I think that's all. Let me see, are there any other questions? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that's all our, our uh, shared answer for the questions on, offline. Thank you.